Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 208, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Pold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And we have another wonderful show here. We are continuing our discussion on Sega. Uh, this is, I believe, part four, is, is it not, Lotus Prince? I want to say part five. Part five? Where has the time gone? But anyway, um, so we are now in the era of... Uh, post uh hardware sega so um we have entered into the realm of them being a third party publisher for uh on pretty much everything out there um you know they 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 were a you know probably the playstation 2 was their their least um uh the thing that they least focused on yeah, but, there was like a little bit of stuff like well, Sonic Heroes. Well, Virtual Fighter Four, uh, Virtual Fighter Four, in particular, um, that that was like the probably the biggest thing. And Yakuza One and Two were all on PS Two. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about Yakuza, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, um, pretty much everything else. I mean, uh, Sega was like a big part of what made um, uh, the uh, the original Xbox something something cool, and also uh, the GameCube. Um, there were there were games on you know near launch with both of those systems and uh, they they it was part of it's part of their system's identity and uh, I also want to mention like this is also when they they started making uh, Sonic games they they made a lot more Sonic games after um, Adventure Two um, and they kind of started to go downhill after this uh, yeah there were a lot of just kind of almost like shovelware Sonic titles. Well, the first one was Sonic Heroes, which wasn't too too, too terrible. Um, that was the one with uh, like the the different groups that you could play with the Chaotix team. Or the yeah, Sonic there team. were that that was the thing. Sonic Adventure Two, you had the Hero Team and the Dark Team. Uh, Heroes had four teams. There were the the regular Heroes. There was Dark, like you just said. There was Chaotix, and there was Amy's team. It was like Team I forgot it was Team, team Rose or Team Love. Us. <laughs> yeah, it was like Amy and like Cream, maybe like or Big, Big the Cat. Yeah, yeah. Big the Cat. Like whatever. Yeah, so so um, uh, yeah. Th- I mean, this this is the era where people started to go, eh, Sonic. I don't know. And then uh, Unleashed and uh, so- uh, and Shadow the Hedgehog came after that, right? Unleashed. Yeah, was Unleashed the, is the where. Was that still on the SD consoles? I thought that uh, might have been HD. I. Uh, uh, no, I seem to remember Sonic 2006 being a... Well, um, Sonic 2006 is PS3 and yeah, 360. Yeah, but, um, Sonic Unleashed. I could have sworn that came out after 06. Really? I think. I could be wrong on this one, but I think. With the Werehog? Well, oh, okay. It's 2008. Okay, yeah, you're right. Because I, I remember what... I saw it in SD. <laughs> like, I watched the Game Grumps play it, but that was a Wii version. Well, you know what? What it was, what was throwing me off is Unleashed has a has a PS2 version. Um, Does it? The, the long life of of, of I of don't even know system. if I knew that. I don't even know yeah. if I knew that. Okay, so all right. It, 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 I think it had the equivalent of the Wii, Wii versions graphics, that kind of thing. That would make sense. That happened a lot. Yeah, and um, Heroes had jank. Uh, Unleashed. The Sonic parts I actually thought were pretty cool, but the Werehog was more combat centered and very like slow and deliberate which i mean fine but it just feels weird when you are sonic (laughs) when you're doing stuff like that yeah Uh, there was also the wii stuff like the storybook series that didn't really go anywhere uh the secret rings and the black knight which were jank as hell yeah but i i did i did like their output on the ds around this time uh and also the game boy advance so the the game boy advance had um uh sonic advance one through four yeah, um, the, the, the the GBA Sonic games were solid. They were really good. They were really good two uh, D Sonic games. Yeah. Um, and then they they graduated to the DS. And yeah, they had those Rush were really and good. Rush Adventure. Those were also. And then there yeah. was weirdly Rush is that, one of my favorite games. I really love that game. But but then they like just weirdly just Bioware has a Sonic game. Yeah. So they they made uh, Sonic Chronicles. Um, yeah, I don't think that one's held in very high regard. I don't know terrible. why, except that the sound quality of the music is, like, not not very good. I don't mean, like, the composition. I mean just the quality of the output. Like, it just sounds like there's compression issues or something. It was just a janky game. Yeah. It was, like, in general, it just, like, physically just didn't 
perform well. Yeah, it's like Sonic so. Chronicles, like Brotherhood, like that that name, like what? Yeah. So, um, like the the those were like the major ones. We went over a lot of the Xbox and GameCube games that that, that, were, that were famous for, but uh, we'll probably move on to the um the PS3 and 360 era. Yeah, of I course, mean, there, there's had... obviously Sonic 06. I think Sonic there was 06, supposed which... to be Sonic Adventure 3. Yeah, Sonic 06 um, ended up being one of the biggest disasters uh, in Sonic history. Yeah, it's, it, that's, it's prob- that's one of the most broken games, like, I've seen. Like, I mean, there's glitch exploitation, but, I mean, like, even the stuff you're not looking for, the game is barely held together. The, the loading times are insane, and everything you do, like, from the hub brings up some kind of loading screen, and they, they, they take a while. There's it, lots of them. It's probably the worst, uh, worst regarded... Um, mainline sonic game i, I can't I yeah can't think i mean s- say games. what you will about some of the other games like heroes definitely has a chair of jank but 06 is like it's just borderline unplayable yeah, yeah it, it's like it's unfinished um and that was a that was a huge deal when it came out because um like it... yeah like it was this is sonic in true hd they they really made a point of the graphics that the cutscenes look gorgeous even though it's like you wouldn't know it was a Sonic game. It looks like a Final Fantasy like twelve or something until Sonic walks in. And you're like what? Yeah, <laughs> it's really I, disorienting. I, the the big big problem around this time was that um, <clears throat> Jap- a lot of Japanese companies were having a really really difficult time transitioning to the HD era yeah. um, because they had been programming for like the P- uh, you know uh, non HD consoles and a lot yeah. of the a lot of the um, Western publishers were weren't having that that problem because they were most of the western publishers had been making pc games anyway and they they already scaled okay. up their resolution um you know they were already um they had um scalable um interfaces for a lot of their games and all, yeah all that, all that kind of stuff was um stuff that they were already dealing with constantly was is you know making sure that um multiple P- uh, types of pcs can be compatible with their game and all that kind of stuff so yeah the um, the, the um I, I would say like the probably the late 90s early 2000s was probably the shaky period for compatibility with pc games i think they'd kind of gotten a lot of that yeah sorted out by one, this point once steam hit which was which was pretty much around this time yeah um well no no uh steam was earlier but oh because it was half-life 2 yeah well, yeah, but like Steam as a marketplace was was around this time, basically, okay. because um, um, Half Life Two was two thousand four or, or two thousand five. I, uh, I remember having freshman year of college. Okay. Uh, so, but um, uh, Steam was not what it was until uh, EA came aboard, and then and then it really started going and then people they they started publishing for it for a lot of other companies after that and it just kind of opened the floodgates but um yeah things didn't really get super standardized until like the xbox um 360 controller basically became the de facto controller for bc Mm -hmm. um so yeah yeah basically around this time um so so pc games kind of kind of got much more standardized it's uh, pc gaming right now is cake compared to what it used to be uh, just yeah. just believe me on this like you don't have to deal with all kinds of weird stupid drivers and you know, all kinds of games that use uh, uh only like, propri- pr- aren't are only compatible with proprietary pieces yeah, like of video hardware. cards yeah video cards all the, uh, like, like i, I still remember i brought all this jazz. up like i've brought this up before but there were those i think like four games like daytona virtual fighter <laughs> two panzer dragoon and yeah. there was one more that were like specifically it was called something like sega for windows or whatever it was like yeah. this esoteric video card that really made them pop but like give me a damn break do you have that video card <laughs> yeah sega was always into experimental stuff so um like that that would that sounds like something yeah. sega would do. I, I do recommend looking up the lazy gamer video uh, the lazy oh gamer yeah that was news video on it because like it's like here's the Saturn version. Here's the he PC the... version. It's like whoa! Like the Virtual Fighter characters look rounded on the PC. It looks amazing. I think he did the 3DO one recently. Um, 
which is pretty cool. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, um, like the 3DO video card that allows you to play 3DO games. That's insane. Um, but yeah, I um, and that was like official too, which is pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, around this time, um, uh, you also have the like the Wii coming out, so like you, you were straddling SD resolutions versus HD resolutions. The Wii was a brand new console, but it yeah. didn't have even have HDMI output. Um, and so yeah, component the best, and even then it was like four eighty. Yeah, yeah. The the big games on what did I can't I can't even remember any any real big Wii games that Sega made other than maybe the they had various Let's various Tap. ports. Yeah, they had uh, a couple Super Monkey Ball games if I remember right. Yeah, but, and, um, and I already mentioned I mean these these were like not really the big stuff. games, but yeah, the the Sonic storybook things that just flopped. Yeah, they but it, they it they was, were on rails was bizarre. I mean, I, you could it, go backward, but it was. Well, that wasn't fully on a rail, but it kind of was. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they all, uh, you know what they had on Wii uh, that I thought was amazing that is pretty obscure by today's standards is they have that Gunblade New York. Um, oh, in LA, the uh, LA, LA yeah, machine yeah. guns. Yeah, I actually LA did pick that up. I need to look into that. Yeah, that that game is really cool. I, that was an uh, arcade I, port, right? What was that? Oh yeah, yeah. They they were really fun in the car arcades because you you had these guns that shook um when you when you when you Very shot nice. with them oh speaking it, of arcade ports there was the house of the dead two and three. Oh yeah and they had um a, was it jumbo safari which was pretty popular in arcades as well you know what would have been i mean by now the wii's already gone missed opportunity but you know what would have been great if they re re re-released uh virtual cop one and two? Oh yeah yeah well, there there were there were a few things also that they had on, on the Wii. Oh, I forgot that House of the Dead Three uh, made it to the original Xbox back then uh, as well. Oh yeah, yeah, and it was on uh, PC as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, in in terms of the Wii, there was a, a few different weird ports that Sega did and weird sequels. They had Nights into Dreams. Uh, oh yeah, the se- oh, and actually House of the Dead Overkill. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. Um, the the world record holder for most instances of the word fuck in a game. I think it I, I mean, still I, has it. Yeah, I mean, like there are games where you can make it happen, like Killer Seven, when you get a critical hit with Khan or Coyote, but like scripted instances, like House of the Dead Overkill just shatters any other competitors. Yeah, I I, I particularly like uh, Typing of the Dead Overkill. Um, that, yes, I was is... overjoyed. Oh, by the way, House that did overkill. I think might have had because you know how the Wii has like a million accessories to put your Wii sure. mode into, like the steering wheel, the gun con. Well, it's not the gun con, but like the New zapper or whatever. Sure. I think there might have been a House of the Dead like pistol for overkill, <laughs> like in the big package. Wow, kind of like how Time Crisis Four came with a gun con. I think there was a House of the Dead specific like pistol thing for the Wii mode. I could be wrong, but I think there was. Yeah, um, there was a really bad port of Samba de Amigo to the Wii as well. I forgot <laughs> oh. about that. Um, but th- there were some some good games like um, uh, there was Sonic Colors, which was yeah, uh, that was apparently an uptick from previous Sonic games. And I yeah. think I think there might have been a different version of the Wii and the contemporaries, like the PS3 and 360. But I think both were considered pretty good. So. Colors had two different versions, the Wii version and the DS, and they were both different. So, okay, and both good. okay. Uh, the DS version in particular was really good, but like the, the Wii one was still a lot of fun. Um, that was the game they made after Unleashed, I think. Um, yeah, and actually speaking of, speaking of Unleashed, I believe there was a Wii version of that as well, and it's mostly the same game, but I think it was compromised in terms of, obviously, graphics. It's not HD. But also, I think the the intended version might have had you like walk around to choose levels or something. But I think on the Wii, it was a map where you point and click at the level of your choice. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, um, I there were a couple uh, games on the HD end that were really, really uh, uh, like good games that Sega really uh, like stepped forward to to publish um, oh, yeah. early oh, yeah. in. Early in the 360s life, um, they made Condemned Criminal Origins. Do you remember that? Did they, that was they, Sega? They that? Yeah, they published it. I mean, I, I know of it, and I have 
I believe I had the second one on PS3 because the first one was never released physically on it, or I don't even know if it was ever released on it, and I think I might have the first one on Steam, but I haven't played them. Yeah, the first one is on Steam uh, and and on, on 360. I think you're right. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, like, I, a... I own two on PS3, but that's, like, that's all I could do. <laughs> yeah, Contem 2 never came to PC, though. Um, yeah. How, how weird. That, yeah, that's really bizarre. Weird. Yeah, but Condemned 1 was interesting because it was a first-person, uh, kind of like Breakdown. It was a first-person, like, mostly melee. Um, and and horror. Title. Yeah, and it was horror. Uh, it was quite a fun game. I really liked it. It was really interesting. Um, and the world that they made, there was, uh, th- there is this one section of the game that takes place in, in like, an underground mall. And there are so this, many yeah. um, mannequins all over the place that freak you out um, while you're playing it. You know so, what that reminds me of? And you've played this by now, Vice, Dark Souls 1. Um, oh, yeah. What, what was your feeling when you first entered uh, Dark Root Garden? Or Dark Root Forest, whatever you call it. Oh, yeah. I, I Cause hated like, it. Because the, the enemies, the little tree enemies, they're yeah. not really that threatening. But when you don't know the area, it is freaky because they don't make that much noise when they run at you. Yeah, and, like, it's hard everything's to spot a tree, them. so you're like, uh, it's freaky as hell. Yeah, yeah, and um, th- this game uh, had like all kinds of things like like attack you out of the dark. So it, yeah, it, it had an interesting story. Uh, I never got a ch- chance to play the um, the sequel, but this was like a launch, um, uh, like era kind of uh, 360 game. And it was made by Monolith, who was really good at making first-person titles. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they, uh, Monolith made uh, what was it? Fear, uh, No oh, One Lives okay. Forever, um, Shogo, a few other things. Blood Two was Blood. Shogo that like mech or like yep. you're in a robot suit? Okay. Yeah, they made the Blood series. Um, oh. Uh, oh yeah, Aliens vs Predator Two. I forgot about that. And Tron Two Point Tron 2.0 was fantastic, but uh, yeah, they, they they published this title and it was it was it was a lot of fun. On the PS3, um, meanwhile, they they released uh, one of my favorite titles by them, uh, uh, Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah, I was I was waiting to bring that one up. That game is that one time, of my yeah. favorite RPGs I've ever played, and like I, I know there's that heavy bias towards Guys of Arcadia, mm-hmm. and part of that is that I grew up with it. But Valkyria 3 is still a legitimate competitor, and I only played that game like a few years ago. That that game is just brilliant. And I look forward to playing the sequels. I, I hear 2's weaker, and 3's pretty good, but like Japan only, so you gotta play fan translation. But I hear oh, 4, four, four comes back in a big way. You know? Yeah, yeah. and uh, I was gonna say around this time is also when like the PSP was out, so the, like, they had a bunch of PSP titles as well. Like They had mostly, mostly ports. Like They had the the um, Outrun uh, 2006 game on the PSP. The that, well, that was also about... on Xbox, wasn't it? Yes, and oh, actually, um, Outrun 2006 got got published on the PS2 as well. It looked like crap, but well, the uh, Xbox had like that other version, the better version. Yeah, so um, it's coast, coast to coast. coast. Yeah, and then eventually the 360 got a the online arcade. Out, outrun which is basically an upgraded version of that um, okay so uh hdfied and all that and um they also had the Alf afterburner climax which is made on the same um same hardware um and that was the last afterburner game i think they ever made and it, it is fantastic it, it unfortunately both of those games have been de- delisted um from xbox live and uh ps3 um the and and steam uh, because they they had um, uh, licenses, so uh, mm. Outrun has the Ferrari license, and like uh, Outrun has like actual airplanes in it, so yeah. um, it has like Boeing licenses, you know that kind of thing. So um, it's un- unfortunate because those are some of the the best arcade games they ever made were those two games. Um, it's it's really a big shame. Uh, like even going back to them, they still look gorgeous. Like the, the the that's just like a testament to how they were made. They were made to look good regardless of of whatever hardware they were working with, which was quite good at the time. Um, but the, it's just beautiful games. Um, they just they just looked good. Um, what else during this era? You also have Virtual Fighter Five, which is the last one they ever made. 
that was a sick well i mean they did later release like a, a An considerable update, update to it yeah. but yeah that's the last you know, num- numbered title it's but a shame that, that too because a gorgeous game people still uh claim that like virtual fighter 5 might be the most technical uh 3d uh, yeah. fighter ever made I, like I, i've mentioned this before but if you watch good virtual fighter players play each other it's it's like a thing of beauty Sega also, um, around this time, was becoming very good, uh, much better than a lot of their other peers at preserving their legacy. Um, they're, they're, they're amongst the best uh, up there with Nintendo um, in preserving, uh, making sure that you're, you play their old games. Um, so this kind of started in the PS2 era. I forgot to kind of mention it, but they had the Sega Ages 20, uh, 2500 series. Sure, sure. Um, so the beginning of that series was quite bad. They they started off that uh, the the reason why it was called twenty five hundred is because they, they these were games that were released at uh, you know, twenty five hundred yen, which is equivalent of around twenty five bucks. And um, uh, their uh, original concept was that they were going to make cheap remakes of um, you know classic games. You know, oh, like this Outrun. was that bad three D ish looking Golden Axe game. Yeah, so. There's a really bad uh, Golden Axe remake. There's a really bad uh, Outrun me- remake. There's an okay Space Harrier remake. Um, but Space Harrier is probably the best out of the, for that, that bunch, but they're all not that great. And, and by the way, I forgot to mention this, that this is backtracking a little bit, but speaking of Golden Axe, they did release Golden Axe Beast Rider, which <laughs> yeah. there's really not much there. Like, yeah, don't. don't. If you've ever it. played the game, like you meet Axe Battler, and like... I, I like when I was playing it. I just kind of got the sense that like the next Golden Axe game would be his because you just play as Tyrus Flare in this one. Yeah. But like, that nah, nah, never ended up happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but eventually, what what they ended up doing was they 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 got um M two who we've talked about several times on both podcasts uh, to start making um emulation collections of yeah. of some of uh their most storied games and um the the series basically evolved uh to to be a preservation of old games rather than a bastardization of them and uh it it became what it is today in in fact uh m2 is still uh you know worked on um on all kinds of really cool updates to uh older titles um older sega arcade and genesis titles and, and sega master system titles um, yeah, on the have, DS, have, on, on the 3DS. Yeah, yeah, 3D. And you have people like Chris Whitehead who are like making Sonic CD available HD like right now, even though that game was kind of trapped on the Sega CD for a long time. Yeah, in fact, um, I would I would even say that um, it, it's such a good remake that it replaces the original game. It's it, it it's it's better than the yeah. original. It's it's in HD. Every way. It's properly scaled. You get the choice of which region soundtrack you want yeah it's widescreen like there's there's like i i tend to like original versions of things to like get a look at what they were like but they're like this is the original version only with more stuff like there's there's no reason it's it's not like oh but they cut this one thing from the original no, like, there, there's there's no reason to and the go back to the you, original they that you did they did add that you may not like uh, if you're a purist, uh, you can actually switch on and off. Like uh, they have like uh, the spin dash. Um, oh MD- sure. Um, there, it, Sega C- Sonic CD had the spin dash, but it was like uh, it's not what it would become in in Sonic Two. It was like right before Sonic Two, so um, it looks a little weird. It, it, he kind of just rolls into a ball and then like accelerates instead of like you know getting you know like the angle on that on that Sonic ball. Yeah. Uh, that he gets when he revs up, um, it, it like functions differently. So he 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 has like the old and new type of uh, spin dash, uh, and he also had a weird dash where yeah. he stood in the like eight. he was standing up and like warmed up his feet, like he did, wasn't in the ball. I don't even remember what that was for. Yeah, it's a figure eight. Um, the figure eight. Uh, yeah, that I forgot. Like one. I forgot what you did that for though. Like, why would you not use the spin dash? There's probably some reason for it, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I forget. Um, but. Uh, I think it's it's maybe uh, so you can accelerate in the air before you hit the ground. Okay. Um, I think that's what 
what it's used for. Yeah, like, I do remember in Sonic 4, I was watching a speedrun of that game, and, like, everybody hates Sonic 4, and I didn't really know why. Like, I mean, how bad could it be compared? Like, it's, it's the physics. It's a, it's a 2D Sonic game. It's the physics. I didn't realize this. If you, like, spin dash off a cliff, you just, like, lose momentum. So, like... The runner was like, ironically, you don't want to dash almost ever. You want to be running and jumping the whole time. Like this sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it it was the the level and the ironically that that game was made by Dimps, who who was making the good Sonic games around that time. Um, How weird. They they made uh, Sonic Colors and Sonic Rush and the Sonic huh. Rush Adventure. Like they made all the good the good Sonic games. Around, like, why would you remove era? physics? Like, when you move forward, you keep moving forward. That's been in the case since the first yeah, game. It's no, such a baffling decision. It's so weird, because they, they also... They, they were the ones who made uh, the Sonic Advance series as well. So, like, they, they knew how to make good Sonic games. They made yeah. the best Sonic games from that era. That's so but for odd. some reason, when they made Sonic 4, they, they completely just fucked up. Yeah. Um, and they made it episodic, which also did not score points. Yeah, and only two of, out of the three uh, episodes came out. Yeah. Um, I, I think they, I think this the first episode sold so poorly or just was maligned so 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 much that the they they said ah the second one's the last one that kind of thing. Yeah, it's too um, bad in yeah. a way, but like I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. Uh, what I, what I was gonna say is um the this the Sega Ages series was really really good on the PS2. Like they had um. Uh, different collect. Uh, they had a complete remake of Dynamite Deco, which is one of my favorite beat 'em up games. I love that game. Uh, the original Dynamite Deco. Uh, yeah, the so Saturn Die Harder one. game. Yeah. yeah, that that game uh, that that game never looked that great before or after. Um, there was a really great collection of uh, Fantasy Star games. Uh, all the Wonder Boy games were collected in in a collection. All of uh, uh, like the Fantasy Zone games were collected. Um, there, there was a uh, Galaxy. Uh, what what's that game called? Galaxy Force collection. Uh, there, there were just uh, and a Treasure collection as well uh, with Ooh, all of the nice. Genesis uh, Treasure games on it, except for the McDonald's Treasure Island, um, which is a surprisingly good game. But yeah. um, does does that include uh, Alien Soldier? Yeah, so it's Alien Soldier. Um, uh, Gunstar Heroes and Dynamite Heady, all three, okay. all three of those games, but also like all the versions. So like you could play uh, the European or, or Japanese or American versions of those on that collection, and you can also play the Game Gear versions if they had nice. uh, Game Gear version. So I, actually, the... that that reminds me too. I forgot to mention this, but Sonic Adventure DX. I, I forgot if two Battle did this, but one DX had a bunch of Sonic-related Game, Game Gear games you could unlock and play via that, like, on the GameCube. Oh, that good luck cool... with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on Game Gear. Ugh. Yeah, fuck that. But, like, what was it was cool that you had, like, the ability to do that, because before consoleizers and stuff like that, this was how you played those Game Gear games on the big screen. It was mm-hmm. like Pokemon Stadium. Like, it's only good for one Game Boy game, original Pokemon, but big screen Pokemon, like, that's crazy. <laughs> So, um, what I was going to say is, by the time uh, the um, Xbox 360 and PS3 were prominent, they started also selling um, uh, Sega Vintage collections on there. Um, so, they would have um, in- entire collections of, like, uh, uh, on the 360 in particular, they have, uh, like, a Wonder Boy collection. They also have an arcade collection with, like, Hang On and uh, a few other games on it and Alex Kidd. Um, and they also have um, was it Wonder uh, Monster World Four got it, it got a, an official translation for the first time ever on that and on the Wii at that time. Uh, they also released a whole bunch of uh, games on the Ge- uh, Genesis Virtual Console and, and uh, they eventually made it uh, the Game Gear Virtual Console as well on the 3DS. So um, and and they also have the Sega Master System. Uh, virtual console uh, on the Wii. So um, they were really good at preserving their titles around this time. In fact, um, still one of the only ways that you can purchase uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. Yeah, because they buy... dropped the ball with Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection. Yeah, the only way that you can actually buy it uh, still, I, I think, is the Steam version and the xbox 360 and ps3 versions of of those games 
So oh, you uh, mean if you buy them like specifically? Because yeah, Alucard. yeah, okay. Because yeah, on the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection for PS3 and 360, it's it's not. It's just Sonic Three and, just and it's Sonic just Sonic and Knuckles, which is it's really very, disappointing. Yeah, you lose the big climactic level at the end. Yeah, which stinks because that that, that that's like you know what you, what you want it for. Yeah, and uh, which also means no hypersonic or super tails or hyper whatever you call them the hyper versions of each yeah. character yeah hyper knuckles and turbo tails it was turbo tails turbo tails they yeah. had some stupid abilities too do you know what those were uh i remember flickies followed around uh tails yeah, wasn't tails it? Yeah, yeah and they just go after whatever enemy they see regardless of what you do they'll just go after them uh knuckles you know how he can glide uh if you glide into a wall like he'll stick to it but I believe if you did that when you're hyper, you cause like an impact and kill what's on screen. Oh wow! And with Sonic, Sonic's a stupid. First of all, he is like fast to the point of being a little difficult to control, and his jump is huge. But you know how Sonic, when he has a shield, if you double jump, he'll do like a whatever the shield special ability is, like yeah, bounce yeah. with water or dash with fire. Sure. And if you don't have a shield, if you double jump at the peak of your jump, you'll gain like a v- extremely brief like invincibility thing like a little just blink uh hypersonic if you jump and jump again he'll like dash in the direction you were facing and it insta kill whatever's on screen so you could just be like jump jump poof, everything's dead like it's absolute insanity it's great hmm. that's awesome well um they they started also preserving a lot of the like saturn era um like arcade games so yeah, you could um, still get Fighting Vipers on PSN, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and Daytona uh, USA finally got a good port <laughs> on on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Uh, you also had uh, the Virtual on, on, on Oratorio Tangram, which is the second one. Uh, was it um, Virtual Fighter 2? Was ta- was Tangram the Dreamcast one? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, maybe the best one. Uh, is probably the, that Dreamcast one. Yeah, because the only Virtual On I've ever played was the original. Uh, I've actually played it in arcade, like the real arcade uh, at a MAGFest, which is the way to play it. But yeah. it's also it's available, like with cleaned up graphics and everything, uh, and upscales to your to your desire, of as an arcade game in Yakuza Kiwami Two. Oh yeah, yeah. I I love um I love Virtual On and. Uh... Uh, what, what else? They have fighting vipers on the on the yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, during this era. They also have Sonic the Fighters, uh, which was I due forgot to about obs- that to obscurity only on Sonic Gems collection. So I was finally glad that they they made made like an HD version of that. Yeah, I, I've actually seen that um, the actual arcade machine as well, which was that's pretty rare. Bizarre, yeah. Like it was I was when I was in like middle school or something. We were on some sort of field trip was that like a bowling alley i think it was like a summer camp thing which is why we were at a bowling alley and not like a school trip but yeah. and, and you can also play as bark and bean and figures mega mix if you care yeah yeah but uh yeah the sega was doing some really good stuff they also on on these systems uh published some really uh cool titles that are still uh revered pretty well today i uh, you also have um uh, Resonance of Fate, which is one of my favorite, uh, R- uh, uh, like, RPGs that, yeah. that, um, not enough people talk about. I really love it. Yeah, like, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites, but it's very fun to talk about. It, it's just a weird game. Um, yeah. And it has some really good presentation, and, like, characters are, are unusual. And so. if you're marginally good at the game, then to an onlooker you look like a freaking wizard. <laughs> like, you look so good. Yeah, because, like, it's this weird triangle system where, like, the three characters, this triad system where the three characters have to, like, uh, form a triangle around around. Yeah, and everyone's doing flips and shooting guns and throwing <sighs> grenades, and people are like, how do you keep track of all that? And it's actually not that hard, but you do have to get used to it. Now, um, that... that that was published by them, but it was actually made by yeah, Triace. Uh, Triace, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it was around this time that probably Sega had it had it the roughest. This is right around when they they published Yakuza Three. We barely got it. Um, yeah, and when we did, we got it cut up too. 
I was just happy to get it when when I when I finally like like bought the game like when it first came out and like opened it. I was just like, oh my god! Like I, you have no idea. They had threatened to not bring this game over because they they didn't they didn't bring over the first Yakuza game for the uh, PS3 and they still haven't. Um, the Kenzan, uh, Kenzan, uh, yeah. was an early not, PS3 not, not only, game. Yeah, not only that, but they also still have not localized the. Um the ps3 hd remaster of the ps2 games i mean now there's not really a need because yeah, kiwami one and two exist but like when they first remastered one and two we we did not and do not have those what's we do funny, not have it on the ps what's funny is or the wii u they had very little uh faith in yakuza uh at this point uh, as a brand and now it's probably their their uh, most prominent series as Sega. Like, yeah, and Yakuza uh, Six, I think, did better in the West than it did in Japan. Yeah, no, now now Yakuza is their flagship series, which is really funny to me. Um, yeah, and because both they Yakuza did not believe in it. Yeah, and both Yakuza and Shenmue, as I've alluded to before, not so much for Shenmue, but they have arcades you can go to where you could play old games. Like in Shenmue One, you could play Space Harrier. That is that it, Space Harrier. Shemu <clears throat> two has Space Harrier and Afterburner, Afterburner two. I think yeah. Afterburner two. Um, I, th- I want nothing say has like... Afterburner one. Nothing. Yeah, I want. I want to say there were four games. Maybe like Fantasy Zone or something. Yeah. Probably Fantasy Zone and because uh, I remember there was an achievement on. for like play all four. Yeah, it might have been Hang On. Hang on. Yakuza yeah. one also had like the QTE game. Yakuza two did as sure. well, where it's literally just follow the prompt and press the button that's it kind of thing yeah. um yeah, yakuza has had a bunch of stuff like it's had fantasy zone it's had hang on it's had outrun um there are the unique games boxelios one and two yakuza 5 had like a not boxelios game but i forgot what it was called one of my favorites though is um well, oh yeah and kiwami 2 at virtual on and uh oh i forgot which game had it kiwami 2 or judgment but uh Virtual Fighter 5, and uh, Yakuza 5 had Virtual Fighter 2. Like, there's a lot going on here. But um, Judgment, which cracks me up, has a not House of the Dead game. Yeah. It's called Kamuro of the Dead, because you're in Kamurocho. <laughs> and uh, it's just an on-a-rail House of the Dead-style shooter where the enemies are from Yakuza Dead Souls. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's pretty wild, Don't yeah. they have, like, um like a bike game in that as well yeah i i had mentioned that on a, a much older podcast i forgot what that was called but that was something i'd never heard it of. it was a game that never got a port uh yeah i don't think america had ever port. gotten that speaking of which speaking of something america never got um fist of the north star lost paradise had those 80s games fantasy zone and stuff but it also had the fist of the north star sega master system game which america got yep. but it was it Black wasn't belt. Yeah, it, it wasn't a Fist of the North Star game, so, like, the actual Fist of the North Star version came over. I think it might actually still be in Japanese, but there's, like, other than, like, the title screen, I don't think there's anything to really yeah. talk about anyway, so who cares? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and um... not only that, but, like, you could unlock music in that game, and one of the tracks was, like, something from PSO2, Fantasy Star Online 2, which just seemed like an annoying tease. You know, it's like how new, like, Pork City is in Smash Brothers Brawl, but we still don't have fucking Mother 3. But at least we finally got Fantasy Star Online 2. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, during during this era, um, it, w- it was tough because uh, they, 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 they sporadically released games and uh, we were always mad at them. Like, uh, this was the era in which I, I said, um, Sega's kind of like that cousin that always lets you down. You love them, but... Oh, you did mention that, yeah. You, they, you, you love them to death, but like they, you can't give them any money. Like, yeah. <laughs> but they they occasionally would have a, some really good stuff like some really good stuff that uh like celebrated their history like you had um sega superstars tennis which was a fantastic game oh, they yeah. did really well with that and then they made the um the the sonic racing games um which are apparently quite good yeah yeah right. oh and i should mention by the way one of the levels in sonic racing is a skies of arcadia level oh, so cool. it's like a skies of arcadia themed level apparently when they showed the creator of skies of arcadia like that level apparently it, it was so like true to what a racing level equivalent of his vision of skies of arcadia was that it like brought him to tears oh yeah i i, I just 
uh, I hope they make that uh, a sequel someday or, or some kind of spiritual successor because you, well, you know what I you know what I kind of like the idea so of like you know how Vice and Aika are soldiers in Valkyria Chronicles. Sure. I kind of like the idea of that. I don't even know if it's a canonical sequel, just like, ah, they're around in some other game, you know? Exactly, exactly. Like, may- maybe they could just be, like, players. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe Skies of Arcadia never happened with the Valkyria Chronicles versions of them, but but that's okay. Yeah, yeah It's yeah. like how Patches is, is in every Soulsborne game, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, um, like, Enemy Zero and uh, D, you know, like... Like that that character is a different version of that character and everything. Oh, I didn't realize that. But yeah, it's like Merrill and Police Knots and Metal Gear Solid. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they both worked for Foxhound. It's a different Foxhound, I guess. Yeah. What exactly. what even is Foxhound and Police Knots? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they they don't really say. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, S- Sega also uh, what they they started publishing a lot of uh, platinum schemes around this time as well. So um, they they put out Bayonetta and Vanquish, um, and you Bayonetta know, so especially Bayonetta. The whole game is just nods to various Sega properties. That mm-hmm. whole game is a love letter to Sega, game. just like the second game is a love letter to Nintendo because Nintendo saved it. That first game is Sega as hell, and it shows. It's great. Yeah, and um, what else? So there's there was Vanquish. Uh, there yeah, was Vanquish is freaking sexy. Yeah, it's still a sexy game. Um, one of the one in, of the in fact, Bayonetta and Vanquish, versions. you can buy it as a dual pack now. The the remasters. Oh yeah. Um, they also made Mad World on the Wii. Oh, that was Sega. Oh god. So if they made that, then they probably made Anarchy Reigns or yeah, Max Anarchy, Anarchy as it's known elsewhere. Yeah, Anarchy Reigns. After that, Anarchy Reigns is a pretty mediocre, repetitive game. Like play any one like level. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, but the thing is, if you play any random level. It's super cool, but then you realize that's, like, the whole game. It doesn't have, like, show-stopping bosses like Mad World does, but the soundtrack, like, every single song is a banger. It's so good. Same with Mad World, for that matter. Yeah, so, yeah, I think we we got this era pretty good because we we, we got all the touchstones, um, like... Oh, I eagerly await Yakuza Seven like a dragon. <laughs> I mean, we could we could probably move on to um, you know PS4 and uh, and Xbox One stuff uh, eventually, but we, and to a degree, we kind of have. Yeah, I mean, I, I in fact, I I might even say that other than uh, their merge with Atlas, um, yeah, like we're we're mostly good. I think. Yeah, I think I think we can wrap up our coverage. Yeah, even Valkyria Chronicles has been the first one has been remastered on ps4 and it's on pc as well yeah m- m- most of the stuff we mentioned are like the big tentpole releases uh of 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 these eras so um i i think i think we're good i mean um other than mentioning that um once once um yakuza got to the, the ps4 it really started to um hit mainstream audiences like well, yeah, that's before. when that's when Yakuza Zero happened, and like, you might be intimidated to jump in starting on Yakuza like four or it's something. Like basically the best Yakuza game. Yeah, too. Zero, it's it. Yeah, it's up there. Like Zero works well in a vacuum and was the number one or two like best game in the series at the time of its release, and it's still like one. Of and the it best. also has eighties nostalgia working for it, which is also still it's a pretty thing. intense with the eighties stuff. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, there's, there's a lot to like about that game. It's just like on multiple levels. Um, and it's a good entry point in general because it's, it's the entry point to the series. And you can, you can play as Majima. Like Western players were waiting that this is the seventh game released in the West and higher than that in the East. And you could finally play as Majima. I mean, you could in Dead Souls, but it doesn't count because everybody plays the same with the same weapons, but you could play as Majima for real in Zero. It was amazing. Yeah, and I I also wanted to quickly mention that they they had um, the Alien um, license around this time as well. So uh, Alien Infestation um, was was something that they published. Okay. So um, I I just wanted to mention that because like uh, because of you know what Sega did like that 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 franchise is like some uh, in a much better place than it would have been without them. So. Um, 
I just think that's great because that, before that you had Colonial Marines, which was just garbage. That was yeah, yeah. Nope. So, um, but yeah, in Sonic Mania, uh, probably the best modern uh, new Sonic so- game. And that wasn't even by Team Sonic, although one of the better Team Sonic games was Sonic Generations, which was a console generation prior. Sonic Forces had a lot of shortcomings. The basic gameplay looked pretty cool, but, like, like Sonic Mania is so much better. Yeah. I I think we can wrap up this era, because um, everything else would be things that we talked about recently. Um, Pretty much, yeah. uh, But uh, I I really do like talking about Sega, because... um, they went from this era where you know you did you never knew whether you were going to get a, a game that you you pined for or a sequel to the era now which celebrates its history constantly oh, uh, yes. their availability is better than it ever has been they release every almost everything uh, that they release in Japan comes to the United States um, and yakuza is a mainstream franchise which it never I, I have to tell you, there there were so many people just, like, basically writing into Sega trying to get them to get Yakuza 3, because Yakuza 2 was a, was a huge failure in the United States, yeah. so... Which is ironic, because I considered it the best game in the series until 4 came out. Like, Yakuza 2 is actually... Even the PS2 version, like, comparatively, is actually really good. 3 was awesome because it went into the HD, HD era, era, and yeah. you had... Area, era. And you had full control of the camera and everything... But Yakuza 4 was like Yakuza 2, but better. And you could play as four characters. It was it was nuts. We barely got Yakuza 5. We, it was only a download. <laughs> yeah, and that was, that. that was like four characters, five locations. Yakuza 4 was in Kamurocho, but Yakuza 5 was huge. Yeah, so we're, we're very lucky to be in a world where Yakuza is like a mainstream thing. Because like people like me and Lotus have been keeping it alive. <laughs> oh, f- fun fact about Yakuza Five, by the way, there like, cause, like with the Yakuza games, I don't go for a platinum for trophies, but I'll I'll unlock the Amon fight, which typically involves doing everything in the game. Uh, not so much for the more recent stuff, cause that's kind of bullshit. But in Yakuza Five, I noticed there's one particular item in the game. I want to say it's called a black belt or something. It allows you to throw enemies more easily. There are one or two of them in the game. When you get it, uh, I can't speak for the remaster, but on the PS3 digital download, when you get that item, it says what I assume is you got the black belt, but it's in Japanese. It's like the one line of dialogue in the entire game that they didn't, or the one scripted line in the entire game so that they didn't sloppy. translate. Yeah. Well, we should move on to fan stuff, and uh, we want to sure. thank everybody for listening to our, our uh, discourse on, on, on Sega, because it, it is a favorite of ours. Mm-hmm. Subject. so for comments uh, school filmer left a couple uh, I've just had some time to play as Min Min in Smash Ultimate she's quite unusual but the potential is just waiting to come through awesome music is of course included mm-hmm. and also favorite sounds I do like the sound of dog or cat paws walking across a floor with a tiff taff tiff taff kind of pitter patter <laughs> sounds and you know what if it's a dog especially you might hear the little clack of its nails oh sure kinda. all right uh living corpse also had a couple of comments uh one of them was just the the, the big post about darth nihilus it says uh sorry i got carried away long post short about that character she thinks the force is an evil god controlling everyone to fight endless wars and wants to free force sensitive people from it by deafening them from the force even a former Jedi admits she might be right, and being connected to all life via the Force might not be enlightenment, but a different kind of doom. If only she knew its weakness was sand. It's rough, coarse, and gets everywhere. <laughs> wow. The one weakness. Uh, and then, um, also Living Corpse, favorite sounds. Opening a chest and getting a key from, uh, in, in Zelda. Uh, punching the cyborg ninjas in Mortal Kombat. I forgot about that. That, like, like that weird sound in the old games. Oh, yeah. Uh, heads exploding in Resident Evil. That is extremely satisfying. Oh, yeah. I, I can't replicate that sound on my mouth, but, like, you know when... You... No, it's not. It's not squelchy. Hmm. There's, there's a kind of, like, a crack to it. Like, like it sounds really good. Uh, the sound effects in Elfin Lead. Uh, I haven't watched that since college. It's been a long yeah, time. Yeah, I need to rewatch it. 
Same goes for Hell saying, well, I can't attest to that. Uh, charging the power beam in Metroid and letting it go, oh, yeah. yes. Uh, the charging sound effects as Godzilla's plate glows before the atomic breath. Mm. I don't know what that sounds like, but it looks cool as shit. Uh, almost every version, kaiju movies have great sound for monster charging up and shooting energy attacks. This is another one I mostly forgot. Doom 3's plasma gun. I don't I don't remember what the firing sounds like, but I do remember the hiss of the ejected cells. That was cool. And the reloading of new cells. And uh, Eternal Darkness, Spells, and Enchanted Swords. Those were great. That... And the, the chanting starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the TX's plasma cannon in Terminator 3. Uh, I saw that movie in theaters and never again, so I don't remember. There's just too many to list. Sound yeah. effects are just as important as visual effects. Yeah. Like, Dead Space 1 was carried by its sound. As so cool good. as its visuals were, that the sound stomp. was... kill. Oh. I remember... I think I mentioned this before, but you can melee attack. When you swing your hand to go, uh, like, it looks so lame, but when you stomp... It's, like, the scariest thing. Like, never get stomped by this guy. Um, and then Fakafon says, Yeah, Buster Keaton. The things he did, man. I can't even imagine how dangerous it actually was. And also, I really enjoy the fact that the last ten minutes of the podcast is everyone doing noise with their mouths <laughs> for favorite sound. <laughs> well, what's your favorite? Oh, it's... Brr, 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 and you just sound like a freaking idiot. <laughs> right. So, uh, the question this time is from Living Corpse. What has been delayed or canceled due to the pandemic that you were looking forward to? Uh, I, I have a couple just rapid fire ones. Sure. Uh, the Matrix 4 and John Wick 4. Those yeah. were supposed to be in what, May? Yeah. Like so. Eh. And uh, I'm kind of just, well, well, that's not a pandemic thing. I was going to say Evo, but that's not pandemic related. But I am disappointed uh, in Games Done Quick being delayed because their whole thing is they get together in like a, a convention center or a hotel and everyone's packed. So you can't do that live. But the good news is their YouTube channel has still been uploading VODs of speedruns from, like, other virtual events. So you still get something. But the actual Games Done Quick event is being delayed until whenever the hell we can have one again. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's too many games, uh, which you and I go to almost that's every true. year. That's true, that's true, yeah, I like going to that, and that's, I mean, to, like, I'm only there for a couple of hours, because I like it for the dealer's room, fun. but, but yeah, uh, it's I, I also live, delayed. like, right around the corner from it now, so, like, it, it, it's a lot, it's more convenient than ever, and... Yeah, it's like an hour for me. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you can, you can stop by my place, or we can get food food near my place yeah but that would involve stopping by your place though (laughs) (laughs) no 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 thanks i'd rather not (laughs) no thanks i'd rather not um on a more serious note um it's a it's a possibility that um my wedding um i get delayed that's true yeah um so uh it thankfully it's in november so um we still have quite some time but it it depends on you know what situation we're in i mean um we we have friends that uh um that delayed their um wedding once already and ha- might have to do it a second time uh for a september uh, their september wedding so um it, it's it's heartbreaking because this is something that you know you planned uh, a lot and uh it's something that you you've been wanting to do with your significant other and um yeah i know a lot of other people i mean we 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 basically come to the conclusion that you know if if it got to that point we would we would get married on paper but but still i was wondering about that because it's not like you're gonna just keep postponing the fact that you're not married like get married today who gives a shit and then just throw the party whenever you want (laughs) exactly um and and there's all kinds of reasons why you want to get married um i mean um you know yeah but uh, um, we we just want to be married to each other in, in long run. Yeah. So um, you know we don't we don't need the celebration uh, until um, until everybody can make it in a safe way. But yeah, because like because like the actual act of getting married is like pretty cut and dry. It's it's the whole pomp and circumstance that people are really there for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, plenty of other people did this to begin with. Like I, I helped Pyro. Um, you know get get married on paper way before uh his ceremony happened um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know over uh, about a year before it because you know they they were buying a house 
uh, at the time. Yeah. So um, it, it just made more sense to be married, um, you know, while they were doing all that stuff. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, we, 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 uh, want children eventually. So we, we, you know, we want to make sure that, um, you know, everything's in line with medical stuff and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, medical care and all that. So, um, it stinks because, you know, uh, we, we've been really looking forward to this. Yeah. You're one of my, one of my groomsmen. Um, so like, uh, it, it, it stinks. I want to, I want to celebrate with my best friends, you know, um, and family. Well, just, just put up a mannequin with like an American McGee shirt and put like a TV monitor in its head and then I'll zoom in. <laughs> you would do that anyway, though. You don't need a pandemic. To... <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? I get to stay home. This is the best. <laughs> Hold, hold on, Vice. Just one second. I almost beat this boss. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I have to beat this for nobody's satisfaction other than my own. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you put it off? Yeah, probably. Yeah, but, but it, it, it's just one of those things. Um, um, I, I was looking forward to uh, the summer, like like you know, going places, seeing my friends, and. Uh, eating with them, uh, showing off my house um, that I that I just bought, and we all fixed up. We fixed up the way we want it. Um, yeah. Um, people visiting my dog for the first time. You never met my dog. Um, that is true. Yeah. She, I never met your uh, chili and second pepper. half of the <laughs> <laughs> battle monster. How do we not bring up? Uh... Oh no, battle monsters wasn't Sega, was it? It was it was on the Saturn, but they didn't. Make it. Yeah, it was on the Saturn, but it wasn't Sega. No, I think I think uh, there's good, a PlayStation was, version too. I was afraid we have to redo this entire podcast. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there there are lots of things um, that I, I I wish I could do. Um, I wish I could go to the beach. I know you don't care one iota about that, but um, yeah, I actively dislike going to the beach. Yeah, it's sand everywhere is terrible. <laughs> it's uh, I, I've heard a couple things about sand. <laughs> Do you remember Zand? Like Nickelodeon Zand? Very, like, I had forgotten about it, but now that you say Zand, like, very vaguely. (laughs) By the way, I I should mention real quick, real quick. um, There's a game called Killing Zone on the PS1 that is a a sequel (laughs) to Battle Monsters. Oh, a sequel? It sure is. Ooh. And I've seen gameplay like on YouTube. It is not good. Oh, like don't bother. Like, you, like you're better off playing Battle Monsters. I am intrigued. <laughs> I, I mean, like, so was I, but like, there, there's nothing there. Like, it's not great. I mean, uh, Battle Monsters was a big enough hit. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the part that I find the funniest. Like, what? Like, keep it coming. It's like, it, it, like overblood. <laughs> I want to see what happens. A heart heat horn. Like Overblood, this game got a sequel. Like this game, <laughs> the creator of Overblood went on to become the founder and CEO. I think founder and CEO of of uh, Level Five. Jesus this Christ. like this top quality company. <laughs> uh, anyway, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I have I have legitimate gripe here with, with the pandemic stuff. Unfortunately, it's it's delaying a major event in my life. Um, it's, it's really a shame, but, um, uh, we also want to be safe and fair to our loved ones as well and not like have it unless we, the conditions are right. So, yeah. And and that's the thing. Like there's no law stopping us from doing any of this. If you wanted, you could come over here or I could go over there, but like we shouldn't like, cause it's that kind of thing that it is contributing to the overall problem. You are the problem. No, John. You are the problem. <laughs> and then John was a zombie. <laughs> what was that from? <laughs> that, that like, Doom intentionally badly written fan fiction. Oh, like, yeah, no, John, yeah. you are the demons. And then John was a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> it's by, I think it's by the same guy who did the, like, half-life, full-life consequences. Like, also incredibly stupid uh, fanfic. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, full I... life consequences. <laughs> Clever title. We should wrap this up, man. Yeah. <laughs> we want to thank uh, all, 
all of our fans who contributed questions, please remember to keep us supplied with awesome topics by submitting questions of your own via the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. Do we have a, a decent um, repository of, of questions? Uh, or do we need some? I'm, I'm going to look it up, but I want to say we have four more. I think this one That's was pretty good, there. but you know what? Keep we do have four more, any. yes. Keep them coming in anyway. While there, please give us thumbs up, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Tuesdays on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in depth look at this week in our lives. Finally, you can friend me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, and anything else, really. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, or get involved in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. All right, well, we'll catch everybody else on the next episode of Reactive. We'll catch you then. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.